Hello, my name is Trey. Welcome to We Gotta Change. Today, we're gonna be talking about a huge substance bus. Um, this, I was watching this video and it was like, I was just watching it. You know, I told you guys I watched court videos and I was just watching it, chilling until I started hearing what this lady had to say. It was wild. All right, so let's go ahead and get right into this. We're gonna go ahead and have the story start with um, what she wanted to say. Hold on, let me fix that. I know some of you guys don't like seeing the time thing, so. I'll scoot it up just a little bit. But just know that this woman at the bottom is uh, Dorothy Parks. Okay, let's go ahead and get it. They're currently preparing. For your investigation, um... Did you take photos? Were photos captured? So um, throughout the whole execution of the warrant, our body cameras are rolling. So um, everything will be located on the body cameras. Was your was your body cam on active during yes. the search? Yes, ma'am. Did you store all the video footage and the evidence? Yes, ma'am. Um, going back to. Whose house were you all in? Okay, so um, in March of 2023, um, the narcotics units start receiving Crime Stoppers tips for that location. Uh, multiple tips came through stating that um, some new guys had moved in to that apartment, that apartment being 3928. Um, the date on it said that they just moved in in March, Mar on March 16th of 2023. And every day there's about 50 to 100 cars coming and going. Um, and then a 50, lot of the neighbors were on, stating that they right were there. 50 to 100 cars coming every single day. This is something you need to remember. Because later on, you're going to hear in this case where it talks, where they're going to be talking about, um, you know, should this have been gone down the way it did? And it, to me, it's just like impossible. After you hear this entire story, you're going to be like, there's just no way that they can go this route. Because let's continue. Feeling unsafe. I then reached out to the leasing office and I was able to speak with the leasing manager in which she stated that she started receiving um, a lot of complaints from that actual location also. So I asked her who the leaseholder was, and she gave me um, a picture of the leaseholder and the name, that name being Chloe Carlisle. Um, it's a white female, date of birth of 9-15-1998. She then stated that she has not seen Chloe at the location and that when the key was given, that key was released to a Jair Embry, and she was able to um, provide me with the photo, uh, the identif identification card that was released um, along with that key. Um, so throughout my investigation, I have never seen um, Chloe coming and going to and from the location. Just a lot of vehicle and foot traffic coming and going to the location. Um, however, um, throughout the investigation, we sent a uh, confidential source inside the location to actually make purchases from that location. She sent somebody in to purchase from that location. They sent somebody in secretly to do this. I, listen, I understand everybody being a lawyer and I understand that you got to make a defense for your defendant. My only problem is that it was so poorly. I, well, I guess I would say it's poorly done. It was just. You got to try. You got to try to do something for your defendant. But you just after everything that was conducted, it's almost impossible for you to then in the end be able to defend this individual that you see up in the top right hand corner. So I just want to say that and I'm looking at the wrong camera. My apologies. All right. Let's get back to it. We're going to move forward a little bit. Just I just want you guys to get the gist of what was going on. So uh, let's get to. The staggering stuff here. This this is when I was listening to it. I was like, yeah. You know, I'm just sitting here listening. I'm like, nah, this ain't too crazy. But then it gets to this part. You said that you, you detained him. Did you recover anything from Malik um, Embry's person when he was 
search for did any other officer recover anything from his person? Um, the only thing located on Malik Embry uh, was three hundred dollars. Was anything recovered from Mr. Goodman? Uh, one hundred and forty-one dollars. By the way, I know that I'm going to say this. This woman up here, she is very tired. OK, so you can see her hair messed up and everything. Uh, I just think she's had a long day. You know, uh, I think she's the assistant to this individual. This is the lawyer uh, the, or the attorney, rather. And this is just an individual who is helping or she could be possibly an assistant attorney. I'm not sure. But just know that she's tired, man. I'm sure she's been looking through this case. She's like, this is get up out of here. This is how it goes sometimes in the courtroom. It's not always beautiful. You're sitting there perked up, ready to go. Sometimes you're like, man, I'm just ready to get. And remember that they're not doing this for us. They're not making these videos for us. This is real life. They're sitting in the real courtroom doing this real thing. So it's just a never, another day for her. So, you know, I just wanted to say that. Um, and quickly, in, in total, about how much of each um, narcotic? How much narcotics do y'all think? Obviously, if you've seen the title, you already kind of know. But I didn't give y'all specifics. I want y'all to hear how much was in this place. And remember earlier when we said there was 100 to 200 people coming through every day. <laughs> Carter was recovered. Okay, so in total seized from the location was 6,930 6, grams of marijuana, 100 grams of oxycodone pills, 68 grams of alprazolone pills, 330 grams of Xanax pills, 112 grams of dextroamphetamine pills, 8 grams of MDMA, 27 packs of mushrooms, 250 small bottles of promethazine, 66 large bottles of promethazine, and seven firearms, four of which had automatic switches attached to them, and $13,073 in total. Did y'all hear that? How much did she say? 6,930 grams. A marijuana, 100 grams of oxycodone, 68 grams of alphazine. I, I don't know that drug, so I can't say it correctly. 330 grams of Xanax, 112 grams of dextroamphetamine, 8 grams of MDA, 27 packs of mushrooms, 250 small bottles of promethazine, 66 large bottles of promethazine, seven firearms with four that had switches attached, and $13,373. Listen, I know some of y'all may think that's, that's a small drug bus. Maybe y'all haven't seen, but that is the largest drug bus I have personally listened to in a courtroom. 6,930 grams? When you add up all the narcotics that they had, that was 16 pounds of drugs they had sitting up in that house. 16 pounds or seven kilograms for my people who aren't from the, uh, using that metric system. Okay, seven kilograms, 16 pounds of drugs. Now remember this again, when they go ahead and make their conclusions in this entire case. Let's go ahead and uh, move forward a little bit. Cool. Mm -hmm. And did you you stated that the, most of the drugs you recovered were in plain view? Yes, ma'am. A lot of that your was first in plain name view when she walked into the house. By the way, you don't know who this is, but this is the, the uh, investigator detective. Does, does a lot of undercover work. Go. Okay. Go ahead. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, like Reed, right? Yes, so sir. this individual, you can barely see him. I don't know why they weren't standing at the podium. But nonetheless, it's the individual also uh, doing uh, for the defendant. These are two different people doing two different defendants. Uh, you can see one of them here, but the other one sitting in the back, you can't see him. So just know that's why it's kind of confusing. But these are two defendants, two uh, defending uh, attorneys defending two different people. So here's the defense. 
Okay. Uh, your first name, I didn't quite, is it G-A-R-A? D is in dog, A-R-A. Okay, thank you. Um, with respect to Mr. Ambry, um, prior to prior to um, the going into that location, 178 Maury Avenue, had you seen him before? No, sir. Did you know him before from prior dealings or from prior crime? No, sir. Okay. Um, and you said that it was pursuant to a warrant that um, you that you entered the property. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, was there um, was the property being observed for quite some time before that? Yes, sir. The investigation started in March. Okay. And had you watched any videos from the investigation prior to um, executing the warrant? I'm the I'm the one who. Um, was doing all of the investigation on the on the unit. <laughs> and while you were doing that investigation, had you seen Mr. Embry at the property or near the property? No, sir. Okay. And in fact, that was the first time that you ever seen him um, when you went into the house, correct? Sir. Okay. Um, that's why I want to say this right quick. That's why he is in here. He was there when they did the bus, when they did the whole drug bus. He was there. And so the, the the attorney trying to say, well, he wasn't there before. Maybe he was just visiting. Come on now. So if you were to say that he does not live at that property, you couldn't contest that. Is that correct? Um, I will not say. Well, I cannot contest that um, because every time that I started my investigation through different times, the uh, operation was already up and running. Um, oh. So I don't know who's coming and going and who's already there and who's who just came, I can only attest to the times that I have been there and done my investigation, I have not seen them. Okay. I am assuming, by the way, that the reason this individual is wearing a mask, if y'all are wondering about that, is because she's an investigator. She goes undercover work. So she's not, so in order for her to be successful at her job, she cannot reveal her identity. I mean, they know her name and everything, but as far as her looks and everything, they're just trying to keep her identity sealed because she's an undercover investigator. So, um, and um, when when you saw him, um, did he did he have regular street clothes on, or was it did he have um, any clothes that indicated that he resided there? I'm sorry, I would have to watch body camera footage. I can't remember exactly what he had on. Okay. Um and and okay, and you in, indicated already that the property was not the lease was not in his name. Um it was in somebody else's name. Yes, sir. Did, and you might have testified to it, but had you um, spoken to Mr. Ambry um, before or after on that day, before or after ex entering the property? Well, before entering the property, we didn't speak to anybody. But after entering the property, I didn't speak with him. Another another investigator spoke with him. We have uh, multiple moving parts when we're out on scenes. Um, so everyone is, is kind of doing different things. Um, so I didn't get a chance to speak with him myself, no. All right, so we're going to move forward a little bit here. That's pretty much the defense that both of them get. And they're also going to go for one more towards the uh, end of this. No more? No, ma'am, we don't field test anything um, for um, chain of command purposes. Um, but through my knowledge, training, and experience, um, the narcotics appear to be uh, what's, what's stated. Mm -hmm. Nothing further, Judge. Any follow up? No, Your Honor. Any follow up, Ms. Paul? No, Your Honor. All right. You want to go ahead with the argument? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, so, Your Honor, this, this is these you are know, pre pretty serious charges. Um, and speaking of these charges, these are pretty serious charges because in the state of y'all know this is Georgia. If y'all know who George Alex Manning is, I'm sure y'all have heard of her. If y'all watch court stuff, y'all may have heard of her because every time she does the pre-trial, she goes, let's get it. Pre-trial. I think she says that here somewhere. If I can get it for you, I'll try to play it. But nonetheless, 
This is in Georgia. So what happens is when you are found with 10 pounds or more of drugs, which they were found with 16, um, 16, if you add up all the grams, uh, you it is considered trafficking in the state of Georgia. OK, so the, what he's looking to is one hundred thousand dollars, at least one hundred thousand dollars is fine, um, as well as uh, going to jail for up to 30 years. I don't think this young man, they would give him 30 years for this. That, that'd be wild. Only way I can see you doing that is if he had had the drugs by a park. You can't have drugs near a park or by children or anything like that. Um, then it would go up. But I, I don't see him getting that many years. But that is what's on the table. Remember what I just said, $100,000 for everything. That's a fine. I think what the attorneys are going to ask for in this was absolutely ridiculous. Here we go. But the, the, the problem here is obvious with the question is that there's got to be a connection between whether or not um, that person was the one, certainly with the possession, um, there's the three possession for my client, uh, Malik Embry, um, and then for, for the control subject. I mean, there's another possession of a firearm and knife, none of which can be attached, control, attached, uh, associated um, with him. I mean, listen, he, he doesn't live there. He tells you that he was visiting. He was visiting. There's nobody that could say that he wasn't, he wasn't doing that. Um, and we purposely asked about the prior activity. I mean, this is a home that's been in, under surveillance. Usually in those things, what happens, they've seen that person back and forth. Um, and there was a testimony that about 150 people a day, probably something, comes in. Um, I mean, the... <laughs> You, you've got to identify the people that you take, um, at least that that person is actually possessing, dealing, trafficking, or some, is, is something. It's okay to visit somebody, um, uh, visit someone at a home. And the, 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 I, I understand the lease is not in his name. The, uh, there's nothing associated. There's not even a card. The, there's not even a card that, that has his address or anything on there. So, Your Honor, I, I, I really think that as, as um, much and as serious as these are, the possession charges can't be associated with, with Malik Embry because there's no um, evidence that he actually possessed con any of these control substances. And certainly the, the firearm or uh, the knife. I mean, many of them were found either in some cupboard or they'll find somewhere else. And if it's not his home, how does he know where it is or who it is? And trying to put the familiar tie doesn't mean that he actually does um, did what they told him to do. The other charge uh, is the trafficking. Way, this, this judge has already made up. It looked like judges already made up their mind. Obviously, they're listening. But I think that the judge is like, come on now. <laughs> come on now, baby. And whatever you're about to ask, you might as well just go ahead and wrap it up. This man is going to be, he's already, now, by the way, these defendants have already been sitting in jail. This is not happening like a day after. It's been 200 days. Of, th these guys have been sitting in jail for 200 days. So that's why when earlier they said, do you remember what he was wearing? It's like, it's, it's almost been a year since this all happened. These people have been sitting in jail for 200 days already. Just uh, just to keep that in mind, but I'm pretty sure the judges kind of already has their mind made up. All right, let's continue. Charge. Um, I mean, the only way I could see if we could tie time with the plain view, but to evidence a probable cause that he did actually engage in trafficking of illegal uh, substances, I think it's the evidence falls short. That's all I have, Your Honor. Ms. Paul? Your Honor, I echo um, Attorney Bastian's argument, um, and I would just like to add a few um, things. Um, similarly, uh, my client seems like the only um, connection my client has to these charges is that he was um, in the home at the time when this um, warrant was issued, um, Your Honor. And I, I just echo to the court that proximity alone is not enough to establish possession. Uh, the state has a, a let me say this. Somebody had to own these drugs. They're, both of them are pretty much arguing that these people were just in the house. It's like, come on, man. Come on now. Um, and so they're trying to get away with just because you were there doesn't mean you were doing anything with it. I, I understand that. You're right. You could have just been visiting, I'm sure. But based off the, what this woman said earlier with the investigation, it's like, 
we had been stalking the place for quite some time and these people were, were always around, you know? So the chances of them not being in there, um, the argument's not going to be necessarily, are they guilty? But the thing is going to be saying that they got arrested because of probable cause, that there's a more likely a chance that they were a part of it than they weren't a part of it. That's what the prosecutor's going to argue that, okay, we're not sitting here saying that they were the ones selling every one of these drugs and everyone, all these drugs and guns were for them. But we are arguing that it is more likely that they did have these drugs and they were involved in the trafficking of these drugs as well as owning these guns. We are just arguing that that's enough to keep them detained until they get to court, which trial, you know how long trials take, especially in a state like Georgia It's big, you know, a lot of stuff going on. Lots of it uh, must prove either. Um, actual possession or constructive p possession. They don't have actual possession because when they search his person, he only had $141. Um, and they're, they're going to fail to prove constructive possession um, because there's nothing else um, aside from proximity. And I do have case law, Blue V State 350 Georgia App 702, which establishes that proximity alone is not enough to establish constructive possession. So there has to be some other type of link um, to the evidence that can point to that um, idea of constructive possession, which we do not have here. Um, further, in, re in regards to the trafficking case, there's no evidence that's been established or presented to even indicate that my client has engaged in a drug sale at all. Um, during this months of investigation, again, they've never seen my client walk through that apartment complex. He is not a familiar uh, relation to any of the, the co-defendants here. Um, there's literally nothing else that links him. His ID wasn't even found in the home. Um, he's not on the lease. Um, there's just nothing here that establishes um, that he was involved in any criminal activity while he was in the home. For all we know, he could have been stopping by visiting a friend and then he gets caught up and arrested at the wrong time. Um, there's no probable cause to establish that he engaged in anything. Right there. You heard it. Probable cause. That's what the arguments are happening right now, people. Probable cause is the argument. If you were if the if you were to go in and arrest a bunch of people that you saw around a bunch of drugs, could you say that yes, we don't know that necessarily they did it, but we have probable cause to say that. And once again, that's what the defense is arguing. And in my opinion, I say that these men should stay in jail because we're not saying they did it, but to say that we're just gonna let them walk free and say that they didn't do it, I think it's far more likely that they were a part of it. Think criminal. Um, in regards to the possession the of the firearm, again, same argument with possession and lack thereof, Your Honor. He does not have, um, he was not found with any firearms or knives on his person. Um, the guns apparently were not even registered to him. The same argument um, for the lack of actual and constructive, uh, actual or constructive possession exists here as well. So on those reasons, Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing is if the guns were registered to him, there'd be no problem. I understand. I don't understand that part of the argument. Maybe somebody can get me up on that. But if the guns are registered to him, there would have been no problem for him to have guns in the house. I don't understand why they put the like it wouldn't have mattered if the guns were just sitting around in the home in the car. The guns are registered to him. It's not like you're going to arrest a man for having guns that are registered to him unless he can't legally have them. I want y'all to keep something else in mind that I know you guys are just thinking, oh, this is just a one-off that happened to these men. No, sir. No, ma'am. Your Honor, uh, we've urged the court to find no probable cause on all counts. What says the state? Your Honor, the state is going to argue that the standard um, is probable cause and not beyond a reasonable doubt. Um, so the arguments that defense counsels are making are a burden that must be crossed at a trial proceeding beyond a reasonable doubt. The state duties today is to show more likely than not that these defendants committed the crime that's been alleged against them. And her testimony from um, investigator Reeves that said that they were inside of a small apartment for some time, um, that there were multiple grams and pounds of a variety of drugs in the kitchen, in a small apartment and also firearms um, that all these individuals was in close proximity to the drugs and the weapons. Also, we have additional evidence from um, 
that links Mr. Embry, Malik Embry, to this location. The officer said that testified that there was a identification card, ID card found in the bedroom inside of a pair of pants that belonged to Malik Embry. Even though um, what we are here to prove now is not residency, but that they were in possession or constructive constructive possession of these drugs and the weapons. And the state argument is that probable cause has been established to to show that more than likely or not that they committed these crimes. Also, we heard testimony from the officer that um, Mr. Goodman is a convicted felon and that in plain view um, were. I remember that convicted felon. This individual that got caught was already a convicted felon. So once again, the argument of more likely than not a convicted. Come on now. Unless again, I understand, I'm not getting on the attorneys. Everybody here is getting paid to do a job, okay? But at the same time, it's like, I just, there was, there was, these attorneys knew there was no winning. They're like, it's done. It's a wrap. And you're going to see even more damning evidence here in a little bit. Multiple firearms. Um, again, this is a small apartment. Um, there were weapons and drugs found throughout the apartment, and that these individuals had been in the apartment for oh, for a while before the search warrant was executed. Um, just want to make sure I cover everything. Cool. Again, Your Honor, I just want to reiterate that the standard is, is the court is aware is probable cause, more likely than not. Um, it's a very low standard. We're not here to prove beyond a reasonable doubt um, the uh, the possession element, but we are here to show that more likely than not that they were in possession of these weapons and the drugs. And that's it, Judge. All right, thank you, uh, Detective. I'm sorry, I should have told you you can be excused. Stay safe out there. All right, on uh, Malik Embry, I found probable cause on all the charges. Looks like Bond was addressed by Judge Dallas on September the 5th. Just to confirm, you'd like to call Amara's mom, Alha? No, I would not like to. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think Siri's got her own little. Uh... <laughs> so, oh, uh, find probable cause on. I feel bad for the defendant. Up here. No, I don't feel bad for the defendant after you hear. But at the same time, it's like they're all trying to laugh, and you know, he can just get crack his mouth. Like, I'm going to jail for a long time. <laughs> Everybody else can laugh because they're going to go home. They can go home to their house. They're going home to their bed. He going right back to the cell. So it's hard for him to even try to giggle when that happens. He smiles, but he's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to jail. I'm going right back to my cell that I've been sitting in for 200 days at this point. I <laughs> <laughs> Siri's got her own little. Uh... <laughs> so, you, see, you see, he took that deep breath. That deep breath of. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yep. Right so, back to the uh, <laughs> Like back. I said, bomb was addressed on September the 5th. And it looks like it is set at. $140,000. I think. Is, it, is this mom behind? Is that mom? Mom. Okay. Thank you for being here to support. Your son, I, I appreciate it. I guess that's maybe little sister or something's hiding, hiding behind your shoulder. Thank you for being there. I'm sure he appreciates that. It, his bond was set at $140,000 and it had been reduced from, it had been no bond or something. Yeah, he's had no bond. I mean, if your honor would entertain a lower bond, we would argue. Yeah, I think he started with $412,500 good bond to start with. And then they uh, it was reduced to, what i had said so i found probable cause on all of that uh so judge already found probable cause that's the end of that right there i want you to hear that the the bond was at four hundred twelve thousand dollars, and they reduced it to 140 and then the attorneys are going to argue this ridiculous request in my opinion mr bestie if you put him back on or file your motion for bond we'll address it on another night okay if you don't thank um, you okay and i'll find uh probable calls on all of the counts for mr goodman but it does look like mr goodman's still at no bond status right miss paul 
And I think that the other Mr. Embry, I think I signed a consent order on that one for him. This is not that important. We can move forward. A little bit. So yeah, do you, do you know who his lawyer is? I have the money to hire someone. Looks like he's going to need a public defender. Yeah, Mel, just talking about the other son. He's not really um, so I will find probable cause. It looks like, like I said, I think your client has no bond. So you want to go ahead and hear from free trial. Free trial on Mr. Goodman. Yeah, that's what she's known for doing. Free trial. Um, this, this part right here, guys, is where I had to be like, oh, well, I mean, he's done. Cooked. Over with. This lady is going to tell you about <laughs> priors. For, for and it has 18 words. adult arrest cycles out of Georgia. Um, this defendant has 18 adult arrest cycles out of 18 arrest. Listen to the arrest. Georgia felony conviction in 2010 for entering auto and possession of tools for the commission of a crime. They received first offender status and it was sealed in 2017. 2011 theft by receiving. 2014 possession of the to of tools for the commission of a crime, interference with government property, aggravated assault on law enforcement officer, and theft by taking. Um, 2015 entering auto. 2018 theft by shoplifting. Um, there are four probation violations and one FTA. Nothing further to add. All right. He has 18 priors, even assaulted a police officer, and then they're gonna ask. And I, I'll just save you this part. That's pretty much the whole trial. So pretty much what ends up happening is they ask for him to get no bond. They deny that. She asked did for a $50,000 bond. Judge denies that. His bond gets set, gets set at $140,000. 10% to get up out of there, $14,000 because he's still waiting trial. So if he wants to get out of jail, he's going to have to come up with 14 racks in, in order for them to get out. Uh, so... This, man, this was just a whole crazy trial to even. This, this is a pre, preliminary. This isn't the actual court and sentencing. This is just saying, Katie's sitting in jail. Did they get a bond? All that, you know, blah, blah, blah. But nonetheless, man, it, it was a while to hear to hear somebody who has 16 pounds of drugs or uh, seven kilograms of drugs on them. And then they asked to get out, walk free, live life after having 18 prior arrests. And they want to say that the chances of the, the what 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 was it is that he was sitting at the house just visiting even though they were there for a while do i mean that's why the probable cause is just good for me because this man has 18 prior arrests come on now 18 prior 18 prior it is way more likely that he was involved in this drug usage just is what it is man i hope you get your life together i hope all goes well for you after you get your sentencing because you can't be on the streets man and you just can't um you gotta you gotta get some help you obviously been going through a lot in your life and i understand that um but at the same time man you're supplying all these drugs you're got all these money all these weapons you're living a dangerous life that is not conducive to society so i believe that you should go to jail um and i hope that you can get whatever you need there and once you get back out again you get to live this life and live a whole different life and maybe teach some of the young youth or teach some young men. This is not the route to go. Best of luck to you. But at the end of the day, back to the cell you go. All right, guys, let me know what you think about this, man. I thought it was a great, great hearing. Uh, remember, guys, if you want to watch this kind of stuff, you just have to go look for certain judges. Some judges put this stuff up publicly. Some don't. Um, so if you just just type in YouTube, type in judge or type in like judicial court and you'll probably find somebody if you're really into this content. Or if you just like hearing me talk about it. Hey, just keep coming here. Like and subscribe. I got you, baby. All right. I'm gone. Goodbye.